Hi guys and welcome to Kids Church Mobile. It is Friday. I just want to remind you guys today, really quick, shoot me a text. Oh man, it's too light to read. 352-789-4115. Let me know that you're watching today so you can get into the drawing for June. I want to remind you that our drawing for June includes this amazing paint kit with filled with all kinds of really cool paint brushes it's filled with um, tons of acrylic paints we've got like an easel which is like the little thing you set it up on and little white boards that you can paint on it's gonna be pretty cool so I want to remind you make sure to text me 352-789-4115 well it kind of shows up but not really ah but just want to remind you to uh, give me a text and let me know that you're watching today and I'm just really, really proud of all of you that have just really stuck with us. And I mean, we're already a couple months into this. We're already to the book of Ruth today in the Bible. We're getting a lot done together. And I'm just really proud of how much you're growing and learning from Kids Church Mobile. And I just encourage you that the devil would love to like take Kids Church out and uh, let people just kind of be on their own. But you know what? God has provided a way for us with Kids Church Mobile to keep on going and to uh, keep on growing. And I'm just really, really proud of every one of you who are growing with us and just continuing to press on. So proud of you. Um, I know on Sunday mornings, not this weekend, but pretty quick here, we're going to be starting Kids Church again on Sunday mornings. Um, but the Wednesday night Kids Church might be a little bit longer. Uh, we need some more volunteers for that. So... Keep in mind, Sunday mornings, pretty soon we probably will be starting Kids Church back up. All right, I love you guys. Are you ready to start on our story about Ruth? Okay, open your Action Bibles to page 242. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, page 242, and this story is called Ruth's Redeemer. And before we actually get into this story, I'm going to explain something weird to you. It's going to feel weird to you because America is not like this at all. But how it worked back in the day is that having a kid to carry on your family name was really, really important. And so if a woman, if her husband died and she didn't have any kids yet, then her husband's brother or cousin or whoever was like the closest to him would actually take his widow and help her to become a mom to carry on a kid so that, that that guy that passed away, that he would still have a son to carry his name. It's called a redeemer. A kinsman redeemer is the fancy term. It's kind of weird, but you know what? That's how they did it back in the day. And it's kind of important for you to know that before we start the story of Ruth. Okay? All right. Did you get your Bibles? Are you all set up? All right. We should be on page 242. And this story is called Ruth's Redeemer. All right. Here we go. Two women lived in a foreign land, Naomi, a Jew, and her daughter-in-law, Ruth, a Moabite. All the men in their family have died, and they are left penniless and in need. Now, let me just go ahead and stop here for one minute before we start reading the whole story. It's really sad because Naomi, she's one of the people of God, and she's known basically about God her whole life. And when things started getting hard in Israel, she and her husband and her two sons moved to the land of Moab. And Moab is actually not a God-fearing place at all. They don't worship God at all. They worship other gods. And when they were there, her boys, her two sons, ended up marrying girls that were not God-fearing at all. And one of them was Ruth. And anyway, the long story short is, Naomi's husband died, and then both of her boys died. And all she's left with are these two women from Moab that married her boys that aren't even God's people. And so she just feels so depressed. She's like, you girls go back to your Moab families. I'm just going to go back to Israel. I, I left with the husband and sons, and I'm coming back with nothing. She says, don't even call me Naomi. Just call me bitter. And Ruth says to Naomi, there's no way I'm going to leave you. Even though I'm Moabite and I'm not even Israelite, I want to worship your God. And that's where we're going to get into today. Okay? All right, you can see Naomi's getting pretty old. She says, leave me, Ruth. I have nothing left. I am old. 
Your best hope is to find a husband who can take care of you. And Ruth says to her, No, you are my mother now. Where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. He will take care of us better than any husband. And then Naomi, remember she lost her husband, so she's still bitter. She says, He didn't take care of my husband. My name means sweet. And for a while my life was sweet. But now that God has abandoned me, the name bitter would better describe me. Come, we will go back to Israel, where I have relatives who may help to take care of us. Man, that's a depressed and sad lady, huh? Back in Israel, this is Naomi talking to Ruth, because Ruth doesn't know about her country. She says, there is a law here that poor women can go to the fields and pick up any extra grain that the workers drop. I'm too old to work in a field all day. Will you go so that we may have some food? And Ruth says, of course, mother. Ruth goes to a field owned by Boaz, a distant relative of Naomi's. She works hard there, gathering the unused grain. One day, the owner arrives. How are the best workers in all of Israel doing? The Lord bless you and keep you. Boaz is a really cool guy, and he loves to bless God, and he loves to bless people. You can see Ruth kind of looking down. She's like, what a godly owner. And the workers reply back to him, and the Lord bless you. And this is probably one of the first time Ruth, first times Ruth has ever seen a man who just really loves to honor God and to bless people. And she's attracted. Yeah, I told you guys on Wednesday that this one was going to be a chick flick. But she's attracted. She's like, wow, to find a man that really loves and honors God, that's rare. And she's like, hmm, I like this guy. Boaz questions his foreman about progress on his fields. And are you taking care of the poor women? Yes, and there is a new widow, Ruth from Moab. She has been laboring hard for weeks to support her mother-in-law, Naomi. And Boaz says, Naomi's one of my relatives. And so he goes to Ruth and he says, I have heard how kind you are to your mother-in-law. Glean my fields as much as you like, and may God reward you and protect you. And she's like, he does. Thank you for your kindness. At lunchtime, Boaz is impressed with Ruth's faith and her wit. When the meal is over and Ruth has gone back to work, he says... Drop some grain on purpose for her to pick up and make sure no one harms her. And the guy's kind of smiling like, yeah, Boaz, I see you kind of liking this girl. He smiles. He says, don't worry, Boaz, she'll be safe and she'll find all the grain she needs. That evening, when she comes home to Naomi, that evening, look at all the grain I got, Naomi. Your God is good to us. And Naomi says, when my husband and sons died, I thought God had forgotten me. Now I know how much he loves me because he gave me a daughter-in-law who cares for me like a daughter. And then Ruth says, I met the owner of the field today. His name is Boaz and he was very kind. And Naomi goes, mm, Boaz, he is a relative of my husband's family. God bless him for being kind to you. So Naomi's kind of like, hmm, nice guy. Naomi needs a husband. I can see everybody playing matchmaker in behind the scenes. All through the harvest season, Ruth gleans in Boaz's field and takes care of Naomi. One evening, Naomi says to her, Boaz has shown that he is kind to you. As a kinsman, he has the right to marry you. Remember we talked about that redeeming, like, because she didn't have any kids by her son? The harvest celebration is tonight. You should wear your nicest dress to the party and then you should ask him if he, as your relative and redeemer, would want to marry you and take care of you. This is kind of funny. I thought that the guy was supposed to ask the girl. But in this case, Naomi's telling her, hey, you know what? Go ask him and just see. And she says, Boaz is a godly man and I'll do what you tell me to do. We're on 246 now. 
Ruth does everything exactly as Naomi described and Boaz notices. You can see him kind of thinking to himself, oh, Ruth came. And Ruth says to him, Naomi told me to ask you, since you are a kinsman, would you be my redeemer? Would you marry me? And he says, is there no one to take care of you? And she says, no. He says, then I will. The news of Ruth and Boaz's coming marriage spreads rapidly throughout all of Bethlehem. At the wedding, there is feasting and laughter and music. And he says, are you happy, my dear? And she says, happier than I ever dreamed I could be. God has been so good to me. After the wedding, Ruth and Naomi move into Boaz's big house. Later, when a son is born to Ruth, Naomi proudly cares for the child. I thank God for the day you left Moab to come with me to Bethlehem. He has taken my bitter life and made it sweet again. And Ruth says, I thank God too, Naomi. He has made good come out of our sadness. He honored us with the man who honors him, and now I have a beautiful baby boy. My son is named Obed, which means servant. And my prayer is that Obed will serve God and his people. Ruth's prayer comes true, for her son will become the grandfather of David, Israel's greatest king, who will free his people from their enemies. I just love this. I want you to think about this. God took Ruth, which is someone from a foreign land who didn't know anything about him, and he took her under his wing, and he loved her, and he brought her into his people. And he showed his own people, like sometimes they were like, oh no, if you're not from Israel, God doesn't care about you. But he showed people himself. He's like, you know what? I love even people from the outside that aren't Christians yet. I love them and I long not just to bring them into our family of God. But he says, I also long to make them something beautiful. I mean, God took this girl that nobody cared about, Ruth, and she ends up being the great grandmother of King David. Wow. I mean, that's amazing. King David, we're going to get to him really soon. But King David's one of the uh, most amazing kings that Israel has ever had. Now, he's coming a few generations later, but not very many pages later. All right, but before we get to David, we're going to hit one more story today um, about a little boy named Samuel. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a spoiler alert. The guy we're learning about today is going to become a really important prophet to the people of God. All right? All right, let's hit our next story. This story is called Wake Up Call, and it starts on page 248. Here we go. In the hundreds of years since the Israelites settled in the promised land of Canaan, they often turned from God to worship heathen idols. As a result, their priests have become corrupt, kind of like their pastors are are turning all bad and they no longer oh and sorry and they are dominated by their enemies the Philistines the priests no longer serve God's people with merciful hearts at the Lord's house in Shiloh Eli the high priest you can see him sitting there watches the faithful come to worship he notices a woman and suddenly he becomes very angry okay let me just say this woman is just bawling her eyes out and Eli says, her lips are moving, but she's not saying anything. Another drunk who needs to lay off the wine. And angrily, he accuses her. He basically says, why are you, you got to keep your wine somewhere else. Why are you drinking in the house of God? And she says, no, I'm not a drunk. I'm unhappy. And in my sorrow, I poured out my heart to God, asking him to help me. I bet Eli felt pretty stupid then. He's supposed to be the priest and he's calling this lady drunk and she's just calling out to God. I am sorry for my hasty judgment. Go in peace, Hannah, and may God grant you what you've prayed for. And then you can see her thinking. She says, Oh, Lord Almighty, if you will have pity on my misery and give me a son, I will dedicate him to you for all of his days. So what she's asking for is a son. She was barren. It means she couldn't have any kids. And for a mama's heart, that can be really, really hard. God does answer Hannah's prayer. When her little boy is old enough, she brings him to Eli. 
She says, when I asked God for a son, I promised that he would serve the Lord all of his life. So I have brought him here to be trained in God's house. His name is Samuel. <laughs> I can just imagine the priest Eli going, uh, you're just like giving me a kid? Yep. And the scary thing is his own sons were horrible. It would be really hard for me as like a mom to give my son to be raised by someone whose own kids are so bad. But the priest says, God bless you, Hannah. I will teach your son to be a servant of the Lord. Samuel stays with Eli and eagerly learns how to serve God. Each year when Hannah and her husband come to worship, she brings Samuel a new coat. It's just like a priest's robe. Thank you, mother. Old Eli is proud of Samuel. As Samuel works in the temple, he shows his devotion to God. Unlike Eli's two sons, who sin against God and cheat the people, even though they're priests. Ugh. One night, Samuel hears a voice. Samuel! Samuel rushes to find out what Eli wants. But Eli hadn't called him. So he goes back to bed. Again, a voice calls him. Samuel! Samuel goes running to Eli's room again. Eventually, Eli realizes that God is speaking to Samuel, and he instructs Samuel to answer the Lord and listen to whatever message God has for him. The next morning, Eli asks Samuel what God has told him. Samuel doesn't want to repeat the message, but Eli insists. And he's like, God said... Eli's sons are wicked, and Eli has not tried to stop them. They will be punished for the evil they have done. Ooh, can you imagine being Samuel? And you've never heard God speak to you before, but he's actually hearing God in an out loud voice. And God is speaking to him, and he's probably really excited that God is like talking to him. He's like, what do you have to say, Lord? And God says to him, you know, Eli, the priest, the one that's raising you right now, his kids are horrible. He's not correcting them, and I'm going to destroy all of them. Can you imagine Samuel when he's like, wow, how do, I, how do I tell Eli the priest that horrible message that he and his sons are going to die? But he has to do it. He has to be honest before God. And Eli, it's kind of sad. Eli answers him. He says, it is true. He is the Lord, and he will do what he knows is right. Word spreads that God has spoken to Samuel. As Samuel grows up, all of Israel knows that he is a true prophet of God. You can see the men talking. They're like, if only our priests were men of God like Samuel. How long must we suffer under the lying and cheating of Eli's sons? And this next guy says, mark my words, they will bring about their own destruction. And let me see how long this next one is. We better wait on the next one because it's kind of a fun story. Remember that fish god, Dagon, that we saw earlier a couple lessons ago? We're going to meet up with him again next time, but we're going to save that for next time. Hey guys, I just really want to encourage you. We live in a world where it seems like very few people serve God. People are more like Eli's sons. All they care about is themselves and their own pleasure. They don't care about other people. They're quick to lie and cheat. And that's kind of the world we're living in right now. But guys, I just really want to encourage you to be young men and women of God. To be like, you know what, God, even if no one else honors you, I'm going to be like Samuel. I'm going to listen for your voice. And I'm going to listen and I'm going to obey. And if we'll be like Samuel, God will raise us up and bless us to be like him. And we will be able to be a light in this world that's getting really, really dark. That we will be able to be lights that shine like stars in the sky. All right, let me pray for you guys, all right? Father, thank you so much for everyone viewing today. I just thank you, Lord Jesus, that your hand would be on them and that your voice would speak to us, that we would be able to hear you and that we would know what you're speaking to us and that we would be wise and bold to even share the messages you give with us, whether they're easy or whether they're hard, let us be bold. And God, I just thank you that we would be your people that we would hear your voice, that we would be obedient, and that we would advance your kingdom, and that heaven would be full because of our voices. I thank you for this in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. All right, guys, I love you very much. And I will see you again on Monday on Kids Church Mobile. where we, We're going to find out a little bit more what happens to Eli and his wicked sons. All right. Love you guys. Bye.